okay we are going to start with our next session and today we will be talking about the topography the physical layout of airports and the ecosystem so first we will talk about the topography so what do you mean by topography this term so it is something like which characterizes the area of a land like especially if, if we talk about that where that land is supposed to be built its position like with respect to the location so that is what the topography means so it is the art or the practice of uh, graphic uh, in detail which is usually used on the maps initially because initially there are these are made up of a piece of a paper or a chart of natural and the man made feature of a place or a region in a way to show their relative uh, positions and the elevation so where topography in air code it refers to the physical layout as well as the infrastructure in the air code so there must be a balance to be achieved between the aeronautical as well as the air transport requirements and the impact of the airport in its environment for any of the well designed airports like nowadays you almost have been familiar with the type of infrastructure is being built for the new airports that is really catchy like attractive so this is what why the topography of an airport the layout is really necessary So, talk on some other points about topography. So, for the airlines, the airports are the infrastructure. Like the airlines can only work or function at the airports only. So, the airports are the lifeline for the successful movement of passengers as well as the baggage through the aircraft. So, an aircraft, an airport needs to be well balanced so as to be used in the time of need. Like it must have all the facilities, and we will be talking about them in the further slides. So airports become second line of the defense, as the military can also use airports in the needs of bases. So right now, like you might have been heard about the news from Afghanistan, so that is how the military operations are being used at the Kabul airport. So this could be one of those example. and then coming up to next so during the disaster management also airports become handy so where the airports are located is also a very important factor while planning so because you know the airport is need, need to be infrastructure at the, that place where it should not harm any inhabitant like it should not like uh, there could, there is a range set up like within that range there should be no habitant living over there okay so now we will talk about that how the infrastructure or the construction is planned and uh, we'll talk about this okay so am i audible to everyone okay so basics of airport planning and construction so if we talk about from the nautical point of view so airport should be built on relatively a flat area of land which is sufficiently large to accommodate the runways because definitely it is going to need a huge area especially for the runways and not only the runways the airport facilitates many other thing and that should be obstruction free of air navigation like mountains or the tall buildings so a typical international airport needs around 500 acres of open land so if we take about a simple example of an airport so it really could require a 500 acres of open land but there are a few minor airports as well who are existing in the less land area so the airport size sites must must be close enough to the population centers that they are uh, considered reasonably accessible to the user 
So, but on the other hand, airport sites should be far enough away from urban centers that noise and other effects like pollution on the population should be kept acceptable levels. So these are a few factors which need to be keep in the point while making the layout of an airport. So moving on to the next. So talking, uh, talking about a few more factors about the layout of an aircraft. So it should not be made in order to destroy the areas of the natural beauty or the other significance. So an aircraft should, or an airport should only be built at the place uh, where there is no existing, uh, uh, existing habitat or uh, existing building or something else. Like it should be uh, made or constructed at like uh, the land which is really free and the airport construction needs the permission of the central or the federal government like whether it is constructed for the private or the public purposes. So according to the Greenfield Airport Policy, DOI has started that normally an airport cannot exist or come up within 150 kilometers of an existing area of the airport. So like if a place having like few more airports, so the distance between those airports should be at least 150 kilometers. So the presence of dumping yard of the waste of slaughterhouse, which may be a source to attract the bird is not a desirable for the aircraft operation operators for safe operations of the aircraft. Okay, so now we will look into the different parts of the airport, the one being the land side or the city side, second is the terminal side or the cargo building, and the next is the air side. Okay, so this is the brief description about the three, the air side, the terminal, and the land side. So here in the top, which is marked as brown, this is the air side operations. Then comes the greens. This is all the operations which are performed at the terminal. Then here, these are the operations which are performed at the land side. So particularly talking about the land side, so this is the public area only. So uh, like usually if I give you a simple example, like whenever you are traveling and some of you, some of your friends or relatives may come along with you to like to pick you up or to drop at the place. So all of these things functions at the land side area only. So these areas usually has the public areas, the parking and the roads. And other than the parking, it has an open space for the other ground transport. So these are the major functions which are operated at the land side of an airport. So now, if I talk about the terminal, so terminal is basically building like where you must be knowing that a few major uh, like uh, operations are done before the passengers are uh, getting on board to the aircraft. So here, what is done is like uh, all the operations which are related to the arrival or the departure and a uh, few more so could be like handling the passengers like uh, they are going through their uh, like security checks and the customs and the immigration all of these things then their baggages and the areas and also some few more functions are the catering and the mail as well as the cargo processing so these are a few operations which are being done at terminal. And if I talk about the air side, so air side is a place where an aircraft is uh, aircraft is being prepared for the flight. 
so first if i talk about we will talk about both the approach and then the departure so if i talk about approach so an aircraft proceed to the runway and it asks for the permission to fly from an atc so after approaching the taxiway it starts its flight and and it reaches uh, and then a flight is like departure uh, approached and similarly for the departure like uh, these are a few operations which are done at the air sites so there to in order to make this all operation function regularly so there is a team who handles all of these operations very safely so if i talk about the team is the engineering operation team and there are also the security operations and the baggage handling control operations then there is network management and even there could be some chances of the crisis as well so a team of crisis control is over there and then the apparent control tower so these are few team which helps an airport to regulate very efficiently so what is the objective of to perform all of these functions so to ensure the safety of the passenger and the safety of the airport to create the efficiency also to make the things cost cost effectiveness as you all must know that each delay in the departure could lead to a loss like in the money so definitely everything has to be on time so being on time makes the things cost effective and definitely the things are being running on the time and efficiently so it it is going to be profit a huge profit for the airlines as well as for the airports okay so as we have discussed about the land side so here in the background picture you can uh, see the area the land side area of an airport so land side area or is it is actually the portion of an airport between its boundary and the boarding gates so this road which you can see here is the boarding gate gate number 2 which you can see and uh, here is the board so this is land side is this area so the major elements are the curb area or you can say the vehicle parking area roads and there could be some office buildings and in fact there are a few hotels as well at the airports so these are a few land side areas and it is the it is the side connected to the city area and is the most accessible area for the passengers so the primary jurisdiction responsibility is with the airport operators and the airlines so the construction and the maintenance of land slide facilities the responsibility of operators so apart from that there are a few more facilities which are provided in order to give the comfort to the passengers so these includes a few elements at the land side only for both for the departures as well as uh, for the arrivals so it includes the atms the toilets the visitor seating area the food outlets the admin offices and atc the police station and there are separate lanes which are provided for the public transport buses drop off and the pick up points for the taxis private vehicle and the vip vehicles which are proper with the proper sign so the baggage trolleys are always positioned along the drop off points within the visible comfort of the passengers so here you can see a few images of the curb side check in area now this is the image of uh, a port vehicle parking so you can see that and now after talking about the land side area we will come up and talk about terminal building 
So terminal building is the most visible part of airport because that has a huge and giant infrastructure. So this portion is the transition place between the city side as well as the air side because it is placed in between both of them. So this place is for traveling passengers and airport employees and it is restricted to the others. So the terminal building has arrival area and also the partial area. So it is one of the most important part of airport. As the passenger traffic increases, terminal becomes even more vital part of airport. So the design of terminal depends on how much passenger is to be expected at certain airport. Because if I talk about the number of passengers traveling on an international airport or on the national airport, so there is a huge difference. So you will definitely going to have more number of passengers at the international airport. So these are a few things which you, keep, which you have to keep in your mind while designing the, um, the terminal and uh, it, it should have certain things to be pre-written its purpose, like what purpose that airport is going to be served. Now, the passenger terminal at the Heathrow Airport London was designed to a very high standard of space and decor to attract just this type of passenger like business class and passengers. So, you know, designing an aircraft with a great decor is a new kind of strategies to attract more number of passengers. So, the scheduled and the chartered passengers usually tend to have very different needs in the terminal especially at check-in and in the provision of ground transportation. So usually such airports have land site that is designed to accommodate large number of uh, charter tourists arriving and departing the airport by bus like in Palma Airport on Spanish island of Majorca. So here you can see an image of Heathrow Airport London, which was first designed with fully of the decor. And this airport consists of uh, like here you can see the shopping areas as well as the public areas. So this is another image of Palma Airport, Jorka. Okay, so talking in brief about the terminal building, so it usually have the FIDS, so it is the flight information display systems. So these systems show the departures and the arrival of all of the flights at the particular date, with the date and the de details. So through these displays, you can monitor the scheduled flight. So this is like, uh, this is situated in the terminal buildings. So other than these displays, there is extra baggage inspection area. So before proceeding with the departure or the arrival, so you need to get through some inspection, right? So there are extra baggage inspection area. Then there is handheld metal detector. And then there is the explosive trace detector. So these are all the operations which are done to ensure the safety of the passengers only. Okay, so moving on to the next and talking about the air side. So the air side is that portion of an airport between the boarding gates and the airspace. So the major elements here are the runways, taxiways, and the navigational systems. So it is an area of high passenger traffic with few physical barriers and usually wide open space. So the primary jurisdiction over the air slide, air side lies with the Federal Aviation Administration or GOI which funds as well as maintains and operates the control towers and the navigational systems. So you all must be having now a clear idea about what is the land side and then the, what is the terminal and then what is the air side.
So here you can see the image that air side must be a wide open area. And it usually consists of the uh, runways as well as uh, it has the air traffic controller tower. So that tower must be need to construct at air side area only in order to check the rooms and to check the aircraft paper for landing to guide it. Okay, so talking more about the air side. So the capacity of the air side is largely determined by the number and the length of the runways, the aircraft mix, the availability of the airspace and other large technical aspects of the air travel. So the air side of an airport defines the aircraft operations area and uh, it's adjacent terrain where aircraft and ground support vehicle operate and secure areas of terminal buildings. So the access to the air side is restricted, controlled, and requires passing through the security checkpoints under the aviation rules. So here you can see a few images, like this image shows the taxiway and the runway. So the runway, like which, uh, the taxiway has the yellow line there, and the runway it has the white uh, dot line. So here you can see a few images of an aircraft. So this is actually a huge space which is constructed for the air side. So here you can spot the taxiways and the runways. So the yellow line being representing the taxiways, these, I, I hope you can spot these. And the white here are representing the runways. Okay, so now we'll talk in brief about the runway layout. So starting from the one, this, so this is the runway lighting area. Then the second comes is the de-icing area. So what is de-icing? So usually what happens is during winters when there is so much of the snow cover. So an aircraft is usually covered with the snow. So it has to be removed from the surface of, a, of an aircraft in order to uh, like to have a safe flight. So in order to do that, an aircraft has some de-icing, uh, like uh, has some things that uh, through which the de-icing is done. So this is the area where the de-icing is done. Then there comes is the threshold that once an aircraft is ready for flight, so it comes to the threshold place. And then the fourth is the PAPI. This is actually the light which gives an aircraft the, uh, to check whether it is on the level flight or not. Then comes the runway de uh, designator. So here at the five. Then the six, here you can see this is the center line of the runway. So the center line helps uh, to determine the center of the runway. Then, and if an uh, like aircraft is landing, then uh, hey, if it is approaching from one, then the seven should be the touch time, touchdown point. Like uh, here, from the six, like from the center line, it will be uh, checking out the center of the runway, and the seven is the touchdown zone. And till eight, it is the aiming zone that is that an aircraft has to be stopped at this point. Then again, the line is a, uh, uh, like threshold that it should come like control its speed. So once the speed is controlled, the aircraft is completely stopped at 10, this point. So once the aircraft uh, is like touchdown is done and the speed is controlled and it is stopped, 
Then eleven is the holding position. So you all know that the green, that the yellow represents the taxiways. So the yellow marking an aircraft who is approaching or departing, like a uh, uh, the aircraft has to taxi to these uh, mark uh, places. So then the twelve is the edge marking, like these like turns. So there, it is to be mentioned that these are the edge marking. So twelve is the edge marking. So thirteen is the high speed. Like here, you can see it is the taxiway. So this is actually the high speed. Then fourteen here is the helicopter stand. This one. So this is the helicopter stand, and now. That was all about main operations, and if I talk about the backup places, so fifteen comes the fire station. So fire station team is always ready to operate in any of the emergency. So it is placed very near, very close to the runway, that if in case any emergency occurs, so the fire team could reach the place as soon as it possible. So fifteen is the fire station. Then coming on to the next is the sixteen. So sixteen is basically the airline service. So where all of the aircraft which is going to be departure, like that is to be done at airline service. Then the seventeen is the bus stop here, and the eighteen is the taxi stand. So other than this, we can see the aircraft ramp and the aircraft stands where the aircraft. Like are placed, and you can see the hangars. Then there is the maintenance area. Like if an aircraft, uh, like had any problem, so that thing can be maintained in the maintenance area. So here is the terminal, the main terminal through which all other things are being approved. So this is the brief briefing. So here you can see this area before the terminal. This one is uh, the land side area. Then comes the terminal area, and all of this. This is the uh, ramp, including runway and all. So this is the air side area. Okay. So now we will talk about the operational requirements. So the main basic. Determinants of airport layout are the number of runways and their orientation, the shape of available side, the constraint at the port side, and uh, that includes the ground as well as in the air. So, for the large airports, obstacles are to navigate, and that must be considered up to fifteen that kilometers, that means ten miles from the runway. So the runway configurations must be ensured that for the ninety-five percent of the time, aircraft can approach and take off without any hindrance by either crosswinds or the tailwinds. So now we'll talk about the runway configuration. So the operational capacity of an airport, which is usually said as maximum as possible number of aircraft landings and the takeoffs, is determined by the number of runways that are available for use at one time. So taking an example of an airport having just one runway, so it is not possible to have multiple number of landings or the takeoffs at a single time. So that is all required to know about the operational capacity. So there are a few a uh, single runway airport as well. So in that case, that airport don't have so much of uh, the like takeoff of or the landings as compared to the international or the airports having more than one runways. So there, uh, so other one is the crosswind would be high for an unacceptable proportion. Of operational time or two runway configuration is really necessary. Like if in case uh, one runway is not available, like it is going some undergoing some maintenance or something like that, so there should be a second runway available for the emergency landing or the takeoff. 
Now, talking about the runway pavements. So, as runway and uh, runway and take off distance got increased because of the introduction of new bigger aircraft, which require more distance. So, definitely, a giant or the big aircraft needs to have a, a big, uh, big uh, like runway to take off. So the pavement must be designed in such a way that they can bear the loads imposed by the aircraft. So here in this image, you can see a few cracks at the runway, right? So this is not should be there because you know if an aircraft, if an um, runway is constructed for a, uh, like for an aircraft which is not so giant, like uh, the small aircraft then it is not uh, like operational for the big passenger's aircraft, the commercial aircraft. So the pavement must be smooth and stable under the conditions of loading during its expected or the economic life. So this area, it should be free from the dust and the other things that could keep the blowing, could be blown up to the ingested into the engines. Okay, so now we'll look into the navigational aid, lighting as well as the marking. So you must have uh, wondered about that why the runway has like so many different colors of light in the market. So all of these are done to ensure something which is like really helpful for an aircraft to land and take off. So if I take about the operation, uh, like operating an aircraft, uh, in the day and operating an aircraft at the night. So there is a huge difference. The main reason is the visibility. So during the daylight, the runway is very clear. You can really approach to the runway very easily. But in the night, it becomes very difficult. Reason being the visual, uh, like the visibility, because at night, the lights are here only to help an aircraft to give a proper navigation. So the, it is the in simplest of the airport, it was designed such that the operations conducted under visual meteorological conditions. So these facilities operate only in the daylight and the only guidance they are required to offer is the painted runway, the center line and the large painted numbers. So the large commercial airport must also operate in hours of darkness and under the instrument meteorological condition, so where the horizontal visibility is 600 meters or less. So for this purpose, very well equipped with the sophisticated radio navigation aid and the visual aid in the form of lighting and the marking is installed. Okay, so the other thing is the air shaft control, who is really a crucial part as it controls the aircraft. Uh, like control of an aircraft is difficult, but it is really important for the operation. So an aircraft traffic control plays a huge role in maintaining this. Like an aircraft requires very large amount of airspace, but at the same time, the risk of collision must be set at very low. And at least it should be negotiable, like at the neg negligible level. So to start from the collision, there must be strict procedures that should be set out and followed. And these are monitored and set by the air traffic control authorities. So an air traffic controller is a controller that navigates an aircraft like through, uh, throughout its takeoff and the landing. Okay, so here are a few tools which are used by an ATC. The basic operation done by ATC is to navigate only. So few equipments, they use the navigation equipments, the one being the non-directional beacons. Then they use VOR, that is very high frequency omnidirectional range. Then the uh, another one is the distance measuring equipment. Then the one is ILS, which is Instrument Landing System. So surveillance equipment like radars, like short range and long range. So like uh, if I talk about the surveillance equipment, so through the radars, they can uh, check out 
the location or they can track the route of an aircraft. So these could be the short range as well as long range. So ILS is a system which is designed to for an aircraft to touch to for the landing to help an aircraft to the landing. So here you can see a few images. The one is the non-directional beacon, and here you can see the instrument landing system. So all of these systems are installed to help an aircraft to state if it's in the perfect direction. So here are a few major uh, other. The one is the very high frequency only directional range, this one. And the second is the distance measuring equipment that it, uh, it measures the height of an aircraft above the ground with respect to the ground distance and it represents the slant range distance. So a few more navigation services include that it ensure that all navigation services should be modern and up to date because like with the now a days now the new technologies have taken over and all of the systems and the instruments are now updated and advanced. So everything should be modern with, according to the services. So. The authority, the airport authority of a particular country has the plans for the transition for the satellite based communication, the navigation, surveillance, and the air traffic management. So many memoranda of cooperation have been found, signed by a US Federal Aviation Administration by US Trade and Development Agency, the European Union. Air Services Australia and the French government cooperative projects and studies to gain from experience. So getting to know, adapting and implementing the latest technologies and the modern practices and procedures. Also to improve the overall performance of airport and the, the air navigation services and to replacement of old equipment and induction of new state of the art equipment. So now we will talk about the aerodrome facilities. So there is facilities for the aerodrome. These has been top notch and is always striving to be better at it. So the basic approach to planning of airport facility has been adapted to create capacity ahead of demand in the efforts. So there are a number of projects for the extensions and the strengthening of the runway, taxi tracks, and apprents at different airports that has been taken up. So the extension of runway to 7,500 feet has been taken up to support operation for airports like 320 and the Boeing 737 category of aircraft at all airports. Because these two types of the commercial airplanes are nowadays in major of the use. So now, talking about the implementation of the aerodrome facility. So it is a key operational and the managerial efficiency, transparency and employee productivity. So as the world progresses, the IT supply should also be updated accordingly. So uh, the AI, that is the Air Authority India, initiated a program to introduce IT culture among its employees, and this is the most powerful tool to enhance efficiency in the organization. So there are numerous uh, new IT software or the application, even there are robots, the automations, and these are these should be introduced and implemented in the airport for the passenger comfort and airport efficiencies. So here you can see a few machines and, uh, and a few airports have some robots as well. So these are all here to help you and to guide you through the, all of the, if you want to have some details, anything regarding your boarding pass, so you can 
through these machines, so you can uh, take your hair. Okay, so now I have a video. So that video is all about the designing and the layout of an airport. So video. So is anyone have any doubt? If you have any doubt, you can ask. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay, so I have one more video for you all. So if anyone has doubt, you can ask or uh, you can ask me on chat later on. So the recording will be provided to everyone and the material will also be provided. I hope you all have learned a lot. So we will meet tomorrow with new topics. So if anyone has a doubt, you can ask. Otherwise, you can write in the chat. So thank you everyone for listening to the presentation and the video. Okay, so that is all. Manbir. Yes. Manbir. How are you audible? Manbir, are you there? Am I audible? Yes, Manbir. Manbir. Yes, yes. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes, Manbir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Manbir, can you make a PDF on this PPT? Uh, the video which I have shown, right? No, no, no. The the PPT which you have show, like showed today, na? Okay, okay. I'll just uh, create PDF. Do you know how to create PDF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Na? Can you create the PDF and uh, share with that uh, okay. student? Okay, okay, sure. Actually, she wanted to see the PDF. Okay. So it's better rather than sharing the uh, this PPT because PPT can be like editable, but PDF yes. can't be editable easily. Yeah. Okay, so I will share it PDF notes. Yeah, but what you can do is uh, you can add some of our advertisement in the last. Okay. You can add four or five slides of our advertisement of our different uh, programs in the last. Okay. So that would be kind of, you know, good advertisement. If she share with others, at least that will go with the advertisement. Yeah. Advertisement about our uh, counseling, advertisement about our different, but one poster, only posters, one poster, one slide. Okay. So that would good give uh, like uh, go in a big size. All right. Yeah. Okay.
please do that yeah sure i'll do it fine and this person will come at 11:45 she is she is coming for what ppm yeah she is applied for the like uh, freelancer profile okay okay wonderful yeah wonderful so we will we'll have a talk and then she can uh, give her presentation tomorrow or day after tomorrow okay so see you at uh, 11:45 all right